Welcome to the Swim Swim Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, I've got a very special guest. He's a Pan American champion, Pan Pacific Championships medalist. Uh, he's been to the World Championships numerous times. He's an NCAA All-American, and most recently, he is an ISL champion as a member of the Cali Condors. We've got Ooh. Nick Fink. <laughs> Go Doors. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, how's it going? Going well. Getting just got back from Budapest and I've just been getting settled in the States and getting back to training. So the, the elephant in the room, right? You had, you had this wrist injury, um, mm-hmm. in Budapest. So, I mean, tell, tell me about getting to the bubble, sustaining an injury, and then kind of dealing, you know, de- dealing with that, uh, through, throughout the rest of your time there. Yeah. Uh, the injury actually happened while I was in the States. So, okay. um, I was exercising and I fell and rather than rolling onto my side, I fell on my wrists and I hurt them, hurt them both. So, um, yeah, definitely had to, you know, take some time to, uh, you know, change my training and stuff like that. And uh, ISL and, and Jason were, w- they were definitely, you know, nice enough to let me go a little later. So I missed a meet or two and, and definitely were willing to let me ease into it out there. So, um, yeah, the first first couple of meets definitely weren't, weren't super fun, uh, just because I think it was the first time I've been racing since February. And combined with, you know, having to spend some time out of the water and dealing with, you know, the, the injury itself. Um, it definitely, definitely wasn't, wasn't great racing at first, but I'm, I'm happy that, you know, they, they were able to work with me and I worked with the PT people, massage people, and, and eventually got my, my wrist right. And, and by then I was, I was swimming normally. So, yeah. So, so let's break it down a little bit physically. What did you have to change about your training? Um, and, and when you were able to get back in the water, how long did it take before, you know, I mean, from the outside looking in, we, we saw that progression, right? You're you're, like, you said, Mm -hmm. first couple of meets, it's like, okay, it seems like he's getting back into it. And then, you know, you're broke two American records in the final. Um, so, so just physically take me through what you had to shift and then getting back into racing mode. Uh, huh. yeah. So I guess. I had to take some, some time out of the water. And then, uh, when I was back to swimming, I had to swim in, in casts, I guess, soft cast. Um, I was able to use my arms right away, which was pretty cool. Uh, that way I didn't have to, you know, not have any arm movement for, you know, a long time before. So, um, that was definitely a struggle because it makes your arms pretty heavy and you swim pretty slow. And, you know, for weeks before, uh, ISL, I couldn't even go a 200 pace, um, in a 50 just because of the pass and, and the, you know, kind of condition I was in. So, uh, yeah, it was definitely, you know, once those, once I got to get rid of those, it was definitely, you know, a game changer and, um, it felt, it felt great even just to, to swim normally and to, to finish workouts. So I was definitely happy with those kind of progressions. And then by the first couple meets, um, the biggest thing that was hurting me was just turns. Cause you know, I feel like you need to plant one wrist and, and use your, your hands that way. Whereas, uh, starts in swimming wasn't that much of an issue. So, um, and turns are pretty important in short course, uh, swimming. So you definitely saw where I was losing ground there and, uh, you know, I was getting feel for the water back by each meet and, uh, yeah. So that's I uh, soft casts. That sounds like heavy paddles to me. I mean, <laughs> was, do you think there was a benefit to actually having those at all? Um, yes and no. I think it was definitely making the best out of a bad situation. Um, but I wouldn't say, I wouldn't recommend people practice, <laughs> to, you know, 6,000 long course meters in them. Uh, it, it definitely, uh, I did get some questions saying if if it helps me with either you know resetting my feel for the water or helping me with fast hands and uh, honestly I didn't feel any of that the first meet so 
you know, maybe, maybe it's because I was doing it too much. I don't know, but uh, it definitely, it definitely made me appreciate, you know, what it's like to be healthy, what it's like to swim without it. And, um, you know, cause even, even for kicking stuff, people throw on socks or for, uh, you know, hand stuff, they'll throw on like mittens or something. Um, but that's only for, you know, working a certain, you know, a few 25s, something like that to, to kind of get, get the feeling or get the work in, but then you, you take them off and you feel great. You don't spend, you know, whole blocks of training in them. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody, but, uh, I do have the, the cast still, if anyone wants to try to <laughs> slap them on for, for practice. Leave your address in the, in the comments and, uh, Nick yeah. Finkel <laughs> FedEx them to you right away. Get them by Christmas. Um, okay, and so, and again, it, the first couple meets, you know, you're getting your feel back, but, but by the, by the end, as I mentioned, you're not only going best times, you know, you, you made it to, to the second round of skins. You went to American records, um, fast, you know, fastest time any Americans ever gone, not just you. And so heading into ISL, how were you or heading before that injury rather, how were you feeling in training? What, what were you thinking your capabilities were? And then coming off of that injury, did you think you had that in you? Yeah, honestly, I, I had set myself pretty low expectations for ISL. I was thinking that I would just go and support the team the best I could. I knew we had a shot to win. And uh, Jason had said earlier that he didn't bring any other breaststrokers on because he could rely on Kevin and I. And so, you know, it was tough breaking him the news that I wasn't going to be available for the first couple of meets, but um, I just wanted to go and, and at least pull my own weight, try to, try to be serviceable um, for the first, you know, for, for all of them actually. Um, and so then, you know, the first, first meet when, you know, I got like a couple sevenths and eighths or something like that, I was definitely disappointed and I had tried not to try to go into it, not trying to be disappointed. Um, but I was, you know, thinking I might build up to a couple of thirds, fourths, something like that to just be average, not lose points to him. But yeah, by, by the end, I was definitely so excited, so happy to be going best times for me and, you know, setting American records is icing on the cake. I think, um, I, I think I was on a pretty, pretty blessed to be on the Cali Condors because the team was so good that they didn't really need me to perform right away. I was able to be on my own timeline and build into it because I might have, you know, been disappointed with how I was swimming if I needed to get in there and, and you know, try to be fast right away. So I was able to stick to my own timeline and, you know, I was working with the PT people every day. And, and I think actually ISL helped me get through the injury faster, if that makes sense. It kind of made me really focused on, on getting in shape, kicking my butt in the water to make sure that I'd be good enough to finish a 200 breast. Uh, and then, you know, I was able to work with people every day and, and improve on, you know, range of motion stuff, strength stuff while I was there. And, and I think, you know, not having out of cell definitely would have made the process, I think a little longer. So I definitely was happy with how it turned out. Uh, no, no regrets at all about that. And, uh, you know, definitely surpassed all my expectations. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it seems like it ended well, certainly for, for you and the doors. Um, I'm so emotionally kind of take me through that injury, you know, when, when you sustain it, obviously that's always a big blow. Like you said, breaking the news to Jason is not easy, but then, you know, when you get to the ISL, I mean, did you feel powerless in a way? Yeah. Yeah. I, especially, um, the first match I had watched from home, I hadn't been to Budapest yet. And that was actually fun to watch. It was fun to watch my teammates beat energy standard in the first match and everyone was swimming really well. And that was great. Uh, but when I got there, I definitely felt a little, a little more powerless cause I was, I was there and I was watching in person and I had to watch a breaststroke shootout from the bench, you know, and it was definitely not, you know, that's, that's something out when, when the rule changed and breaststroke was going to be suggested as part of the shootout. I, I was so excited for that and I wanted to be a part of it. And I had to, you know, sit on the sideline and, and, you know, watch my teammates do well too, but um, I wanted to get out there and help too. So definitely I want, I was coming into ISL with, you know, a lot of confidence from last year. 
uh, I wanted to do really well and kind of keep that confidence and, and momentum going through ISL into 2021. And when the injury happened, I definitely, um, definitely was, was, um, upset. I, you know, thought that I wouldn't even be able to go to, um, Budapest. So at that point I kind of just restructured my focus and, and was more set on just going and training and being good for the team out there. And yeah, it, now that I'm almost to where I was hoping it would go, uh, before the injury it was, you know, going best times and, and starting to get that confidence and momentum again for, for next year. Yeah. I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's a cool way to turn it around when, when you're, when you were at a low point like that, or, you know, maybe not even a low point, but just that's hard. That's a blow. Right. Um, especially in, in the bubble when you're there and it's like, I, I would imagine that some fear starts creeping in of like, Oh, will I be able to contribute? Will I be able to do this or that? Um, how do you, what do you do to pick yourself up or, or say, okay, just, just keep going. Just, you know, keep, stay steady, stay my path. Like you said, you were able to go at your own pace and, and have that success. Yeah. My, I mean, my teammates were fantastic. Um, cause you know, everyone knew kind of the nature of my situation and everyone supported me throughout the whole thing. So teammates, teammates weren't, um, you know, saying, you know, Nick, where were you, Nick, you're not doing, you know, a great job, Nick, you need to be better. They were saying, you know, Oh, every day you're getting better. You're looking better every day, you know, and, coaches were saying, Oh, imagine what you could do with two more days of rest. Imagine what you could do with four more days of rest. And that's kind of how it was going. And, and, um, you know, my wrists and my body was, was literally getting better every day. So, hmm. you know, it was something like that, where with the help of, you know, my teammates, I think, I think they supported me through it. And, and I was really happy that they were so accepting of, of what was going on. Um, cause, yeah, I mean, the men's men's breaststroke for Cali started out pretty rough, so I'm happy that they were patient and they were patient with me, and and uh, you know Kevin ended up coming along too, so that was great to see him get better as he went through it. So you know, I was just able to trust my training and and know that with every day I was gonna get better and better. Yeah, and again, so cool that you did. Uh, so a couple more ISL questions. What was, you know, you finally did get to get into that breaststroke skins, uh, in the final, what, I mean, yeah. what was that like? Tell me about that. I was really looking forward to it. And obviously on the second day, I, I really wanted to have a good hundred and then show up for the skins too. Cause you know, I, I kind of, you know, took it a little bit personally that they picked breaststroke. Uh, you know, they were afraid, they're afraid of Caleb and the free and fly. That's understandable. Um, I thought they were going to pick backstroke, but they picked breaststroke. So I wanted to get out there and I wanted to really, you know, show people that I, I could do shootouts because uh, I had a little bit of practice of doing them in the pro series meets where I did really well that year. Um, so I really wanted to step up and, and do well. And it was, uh, it was, it was, it was going really well. Uh, I made the the top four and I really, really wanted that, that top two slot and, you know, hopefully a chance to win it, but I had a long finish and Adam PD is Adam PD. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he, he needed a little confidence boost after breaking that world record. So I, <laughs> I let him get a little, a little uh, touch at the end. <laughs> That's kind of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, a, just a giving guy. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, it was, it was cool to see you in that shootout format, especially because as you mentioned, um, from, from a spectator's perspective, I'd seen you do so well in, in that, uh, pro swim shootout s format. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's cool to finally see you get that chance and, and, and make it to the top four and, and almost the top two. Um, yeah. next time, <laughs> next time there's always next season. Uh, and so then in the ISL bubble, you know, have, have, had you ever been in a situation where you were racing so much? Um, because I have to assume, and I've talked to a lot of people about this and, um, I'm still baffled by just how you balance training and meet prep because everyone's going so fast at every single meet and these, you know, especially towards the end of the season, the meets were like 
two days on, two days off, two days on, two days off. Yeah, no, it's, it was definitely interesting to see how everyone kind of approached it differently. I think everyone with, you know, the crazy summer that we had, people were just coming into a different, you know, training backgrounds, different, um, you know, approaches to how they were going to swim this camp, this series of meets. And, um, yeah, it was, you know, my, my situation was definitely, you know, unique in that I was kind of forced to do some stuff with regards to training and competing with my injury. But, um, yeah, I think, I think it's, I, I haven't really done racing like that before. Uh, you know, I've done a couple of world cups where you do two days on and then three or four days off two days on, but then it's just two or three meets and that's it. Um, it's not, you know, six weeks in some, you know, somewhere racing all the time. So, uh, it definitely was different and it was definitely new, but I think people coming from the college system know what it's like to do dual meets every weekend. They know what it's like to, uh, you know, train through those and expect to swim fast on, on weekends. And I think the coaching staff here and, and Jack really puts us in a position to race pretty frequently. And, and, you know, coming from this program, I know that all the Georgia people, we were going to get better as we got going because um, we usually don't get too tired by the end of, of meets and we just get better and better as we go. So uh, I, I knew, you know, I, I was pretty confident that, that we could do somewhat close to a full training for a lot of the camp and still some really fast and then, you know, maybe do a little taper towards the end and, and see what we could go. Yeah. Uh, Tell me about your quarantine. You know, it started in March. Like you said, you hadn't raced since February. What was your situation like for those, you know, six, seven months? Were you out of the pool for a long stint? Were you able to stay in relatively good shape? What, what were you doing? Um, I was, so I went down to Florida, um, with my, uh, to my grandparents' house and, uh, me and my parents were there to help them through quarantine and all that stuff. So, uh, I stayed active by running and biking, uh, a lot at the beginning. And then there was also a, a pool in the backyard. So at first I was hooking up a short tube and doing some, you know, sessions like that, where I would just try to, you know, I guess make a pretend set where I was on for a certain amount of strokes or a certain amount of time. And then, uh, my mom was there timing me and like, would like pull me back in when I needed rest and stuff like that. So, um, it was definitely, you know, a little bit gimmicky at the beginning, uh, just trying to get feel for the water, just trying to stay, stay active. And then we found out that a neighbor, or someone in the neighborhood had a single lane, 25 yard pool that was about three feet deep and no flags or anything like that. So, um, and it got, it, it did get very hot at some points because not much water and they were actually, uh, Canadians that went home. So okay. their pool was open. I was able to get in the backyard, but there was like no heating, no temperature regulation. So I was at, at one point I was doing seven K workouts in a single lane wavy pool like that. Yeah. Just to do the best I could. And, and I knew when, you know, we got back to Georgia, I'd, I'd try to be in the best shape I could be. So between that and biking and uh, yeah, doing a little bit of dry land. I mean, I, I wasn't really able to get much weights in um, just cause weight rooms were closed everywhere. And, my grandfather doesn't have a, uh, you know, barbell in the backyard. So, <laughs> uh, we were, we, I was able to, you know, manage and I think I did, you know, a lot better than, than some other people from what I've heard, but, um, yeah, definitely backyard pools with a backbone of USA swimming this summer. So, yeah. I, I had fun doing that. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been, it's been funny hearing everyone's account of, Oh yeah, this neighbor had a pool. That neighbor had a pool. I, yeah. you, you nailed it. <laughs> Backyard pools were really ke- yeah. kept the national team going. It seems like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, we, we really didn't have a choice. It was fine water where you could. And, you know, some people had to do lake swims or ocean swims or something like that. But, you know, I, especially after ISL hearing some of the Europeans talk hearing some of the foreigners say, 
their situation is they may have been out of the water for, you know, three months, something like that. So, you know, I was, I was never that unlucky. I, I was, I had access to water, even though, you know, it wasn't a great situation. It was still, it was still laps I could do and, uh, or even short tube I could do. So, <laughs> yeah. What was, what was the most grueling workout you did in this single lane, 25 yard pool? Well, I'm trying to think, I know, Brushstroke pull was really hard because you make a surprisingly good amount of waves from doing brushstroke pull. And when you're in the single lane, all the waves <laughs> are back right to you. So I was constantly fighting through waves. Uh, you know, even in the flip turns, out of flip turns, whenever it was, you'd stop on the wall and just it would like hit you <laughs> trying to get water yeah. trying to get, or trying to get breath. Um, so I'd say that was definitely surprisingly the hardest part of doing workouts there. But, um, I don't know. I was getting, I was getting workouts that were, that were pretty tough. I'm, I don't know if I can remember any off the top of my head, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, I was definitely trying to get after it the best I could. <laughs> and, and Jack wasn't taking it easy. <laughs> uh, no, no. I, well, he was, uh, he, he knew, that we definitely needed a break when we heard the games got postponed and um, he knew that he was understanding that we needed some time off out of not just of, you know, out of the pool, but no exercise, just kind of keep it low key. Mm -hmm. So um, he was definitely understanding in that way. And then um, I actually had a coach, a different coach that I've swam with before send me workouts and I was forwarding them to him and he loved it because they were so hard and so challenging. So <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely, um, definitely hard. And I definitely, you know, try to do my best to, to keep up with it. And it's not always easy when you don't know when the next meet is on the horizon. You don't know when you're going to be in a pool with teammates. So, uh, motivation wasn't easy to come by, but, um, you know, pretty after a good break, I think I was eager to, to get back into shape and, and to show up whenever we did get back together, you know, in, in good shape. So when, when y'all did get back to Georgia, was it fair? Was it, was it at least a bit comical seeing just kind of the different places that everyone was in? Um, or did you guys, you know, come back and, and fall into it pretty streamlined? Um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say hearing some of the you know, what some people were doing to, to stay in shape and stuff the lengths some people had to go to, to, to get pool space and stuff was funny. But, um, you know, at, at the end, I think we all came back and, and were ready to, you know, at least get into a routine. I wouldn't say everyone was, you know, I think Jack really didn't want to, you know, ramp it up too much right away just because, you know, at that point it was still, at that point we would still be, you know, getting ready for the Olympic games. If we had qualified, like it wasn't even, the year wasn't even over yet, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, I think he was kind of just doing a little more maintenance stuff. And so that kind of made practices a little bit better and <laughs> he could look forward to it. And, and, uh, you know, it wouldn't, it wasn't, we weren't going to be buried for, you know, a few more months. So I think, I think everyone was definitely on board with, with that kind of schedule. Nice. And for you, what was the best part of just getting back to Athens? Um, let's see the best part of getting back to Athens. Well, I got back and I had to move right away. So that wasn't something <laughs> I was looking forward to, but, uh, no, I mean, getting back and, and seeing everybody, I mean, we, we did our best not to spend too much time. I think, um, you know, we, we did have our little bubble, but, uh, you know, the pro group bubble. So we were trying to spend time with each other here and there, nothing too too crazy, but it was, it was good to get back into a swimming routine and it was great to like have teammates to swim next to and, and, you know, to push you in practice. Whereas swimming in that single lane pool by yourself for, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks was not, not, not how I envisioned, you know, being a professional swimmer would be, but obviously the circumstances dictated that. So, um, yeah, it was, it was good to be back in a group and, and back to a, a routine. Yeah. 
I, I spoke with Andrew Wilson just a couple of weeks ago and, you know, he mentioned when he got down to Georgia, how instrumental just getting to train with you has been uh, for him because, you know, you guys really push each other in breaststroke sets. Yeah. You know, what's it like having him back and, and just kind of generally getting to train with Andrew on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, it's good. It's good. I, I've had a couple of good training partners with the college team and stuff like that over the years, but he's, he's definitely great to train with. And, and Kevin is too, um, you know, having, I think I take for granted having those guys there every day. Cause some people on our team just don't have, you know, they're not swimming with people who are, you know, their level of swimming or, you know, don't have training partners. And I have not only one, but two. So, um, I, you know, I know Wilson, he really likes to get after it every day and he'll push in the weight room and, you know, come back and try his hardest in the afternoon workouts. And I love that. Um, and he's, you know, he's funny to have around too. So, uh, it's, it's definitely good having him, him there. And, and I, you know, I, I am happy that he stayed. I'm happy that he came because <laughs> I know he was at Texas for a while and needed to change the scenery. So I'm happy that he came here because, because, uh, I think we really, we've really been pushing ourselves in practice. And I think, um, I think we're, we're expecting big things in, in 21. Yeah. So you, you've been on the swim scene for a long, long time. You know, I think your first world championships was 2013. Is that right? Okay. Yep. Um, so I'm, and you were 20 uh, at those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so you, you, you've been doing it for a long time. So I'm, you know, generally just kind of curious you, and we've, we've seen you at a lot of, a lot of pro swims. It, it, you know, obviously you've been to world championships, Pan Ams, Pan Packs, you race really fast and you can go really fast a lot of the time. Um, and, and again, in ISL just a month ago, you, you're still going best times. You're still doing it. You're still go improving. You're making improvements um and you've been in the same spot for a long time i guess this is kind of a big question but just what what <clears throat> keeps you motivated to do it being being in the same spot for a long time being at such a high level for a long time um you know and especially going through a quarantine like this um what what keeps that motivation there for you yeah. I, I mean, that's, that is definitely a, a big question, a, a loaded question, but I don't know. I, um, I, after, after 16, I definitely considered, uh, stopping, you know, not, not, uh, swimming again and, and retiring and, and moving on. But, um, I don't know. I, I always find that I feel like I have more to give to the sport. Um, I'm always, you know, even going best times, even, uh, like take ISL, for example, I was super happy. I was able to get American records and, you know, go best times and all that stuff. But I was pretty disappointed that I wasn't, uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't able to win the shootout and I wanted to do that. And so, you know, there's always that hunger. There's always that desire for more. And that's kind of what's kept me going through, you know, especially quarantine, but over the past few years is, um, yeah, I've, I've had some success in the sport and, you know, I'll probably appreciate it later when I'm done. But for now, I, I just want more. I want to be better. And I think there's that room to, to get better. I, I think, um, you know, last year I was definitely hitting, hitting a good stride after Pan Ams. And, you know, I was going best in-season times in the pro meets. And I think that was just, uh, that was just the, you know, the beginning of, of me getting, getting better, you know, building up for, for an Olympic year. And I think, yeah, I think I have more to give and I think, you know, my best times are, are good and I'm happy with them, but I, I want to be better and I want to be more on the world stage and in the big pool. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not ready to be done yet. I'm always hungry and, uh, you know, sometimes getting up in the morning is a little tough, but once I get to the pool, I'm, I'm ready to go and, uh, ready to, ready to, to, to get better. I mean, it seems like with that Georgia pro group, there's, it makes motivation maybe a little easier, you know, because uh -huh. like you said, you've got those training partners, you've got such a big crew of people who are kind of all on the same page. Um, I, again, you've, you've been at Georgia a while now. What changes have you made 
um, maybe inside the pool, outside the pool, just over the last five, seven years um, that have allowed you to keep making those, those improvements and, and growing? Uh-huh. Um, well, so I think a couple years ago, I started doing uh, new weights. I started working with um, Keenan Robinson from USA Swimming. I think he's really helped me kind of develop, take that next step. Nothing, nothing against my former weight coach, but I think I just needed to change. And I think I was able to develop a little more muscle, a little more strength that way. Um, so I, I, I don't know, I kind of, I kind of think I was like lifting a lot better, getting stronger, um, wanted a lot more power, but then in the water, especially last year, I, I've always done, you know, a little bit of IM stuff, a little bit of distance stuff too, but I was really focusing. I knew at the end of the year, I only had a 200. I wasn't, I didn't make Pan Ams in the hundred. So I was really kind of focused on, on swimming, you know, more for IM groups, more longer, you know, longer sets, just trying to, um, be in the best shape I could. So I wanted to kind of swim you know, like a, like a distance swimmer, but lift like a sprinter. And I feel like that mentality is like kind of helped me become better overall. Cause I want to be, you know, I want to be in better shape than anyone else in my heat. And I also want to be stronger and faster than everybody else in my heat. So, um, that's kind of the new mentality I've been taking when it comes to like just training. But I also think, after I, I took swimming really seriously until 2016, whereas if I had a bad practice, I'd get upset with myself. If I didn't do something as fast as I wanted to, I'd get upset. And, and now I definitely have uh, more of a fresh perspective where I tend to have more fun with it, if that makes sense, where, um, you know, if, if you now I don't take everything as seriously and I think that's a good thing. Um, I was super robotic and, and, you know, mechanical back then, but now it's, you know, having fun with, with people who, you know, are still training hard, still trying to get the best, you know, the most out of every workout, but I'm definitely more relaxed if I have a bad practice. Uh, you know, I, if, yeah, I, I think, you know, if I'm really tired or something, I can kind of just like laugh it off and, and know that it's just part of the, the grind as opposed to doing, you know, stressing, trying to get better for the next workout as, uh, you know, I used to do. So, I think um, definitely having a little bit more perspective in you know the grand scheme of things. This is this is a crazy sport if you don't like what you do. So you have to really enjoy it. And you know, doing nine practices a week with weights and you know two hours of staring at a black line. It's it's not it's not fun. You know, if you're not having fun. So um, that's kind of the mentality I've been trying to keep the past past few years. And I think it's really been really been working. I, I remember uh, Chase Kalish talking about a similar mentality from from pre Rio to post Rio. Of, uh-huh. You know, I, I think he also described himself as like you know robotic and very methodical, very serious leading up to those Olympics. Then afterwards, you know, able to able to kind of shift that perspective, and it's it, it seems like a a good thing for for most athletes, right? Um, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so, so you changed, changed weights. That's uh, you, you mentioned Pan American games and how you were training, training like a distance swimmer, lifting like a sprinter because you're only swimming the 200, but you ended up swimming a hundred to one hundreds, uh, on that relay. And I mean, how did you have to lobby a lot for yourself to get on that morning relay? No, I I think, I think the coaches were happy to see what I could do in, um, in the morning relay, at least I think historically, you know, if I have a good 200, I'll have a good hundred. If I have an okay, 200, I'll have an okay. You know, it's, it's pretty, um, pretty, I guess, parallel to how how I go. Yeah. So, um, you know, I had the biggest drop I've had in, in years and years in the 200. So I don't think I had to do much lobbying. I think, you know, I was, I did one of those like, Hey, like <laughs> for the prelims relay, I'll be ready and something like that. So I think they were um, happy to see what I could go at least in the prelims relay. And then, you know, decide from there. And uh, I guess I was able to swim fast enough. And, and I think the coaches were happy to put me on and yeah, that was, 
that was a lot of fun, definitely being on a relay. Cause, um, you know, I, I think being on a couple of world championships teams, especially in the hundred, I haven't really gotten that relay experience yet. Um, I think I was on a prelims relay in 2013, but that might've been it. So I, um, I was definitely happy to not only, not only be on the prelims relay, but earn my way onto the finals relay. So I was, yeah, definitely excited with, with how that was and ready to prove myself. And, um, yeah, that, that relay was, was really cool to be on, you know, car shields and, and Nathan. So definitely a loaded relay and, and I was happy I was able to, to pull my weight and, and yeah, even, even happy to swim a hundred, even though it's like kind of a, you know, make believe time. I, I think I knew about what I would have gone and, um, you know, it was, it was a fun, fun experience. I mean, that is really cool, especially when, like you said, you're training the whole season thinking, okay, I'm just going to swim this one thing, uh, uh <clears throat> to, to be able to, yeah, branch out a little and, and, and get a gold medal to boot, um, yeah. as, as the icing on the cake. Yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> uh, do you, do you have a favorite international meet that you've been to to date? Favorite international meet, um, or just one that stands out, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I have pretty good memories of of all of them. Um, I definitely enjoyed 2017 Worlds. I think the environment there was crazy electric. With, I mean, the people in Budapest love swimming, and I think that's something that would have made ISL incredible this year. Obviously, you know, you can't have a bunch of people in the stands first, you know, COVID reasons, but, um, that was definitely something that made 2017 very memorable. Uh, we had an awesome training camp in Croatia. We had, you know, a great setup in Budapest and, um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything in, in particular I could really point out to being better than the other trips, but I just remember that swimming environment being, uh, yeah, very electric, very, very fun. And I think, I swam while well there too, so <laughs> doesn't hurt. <laughs> doesn't hurt. That's that's cool. I've again heard a lot of good things about that meet. I uh -huh. you guys, you took a boat from the hotel to the pool, right? Yeah, that was an option. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> you, could, you could take a bus or you could ferry uh, from the hotel to the pool. So a couple times I did the ferry, a couple times I did the bus. Gotcha. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's, that seems not too bad. Yeah, it was it was a different experience, which was you know very cool. You could sit outdoors and get some fresh air as opposed to being on a bus when you're like huddled <laughs> together. And... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, all right, so I don't I don't want I don't want to keep you too long, but um, you know, looking forward, you just came off this ISL bubble. You, like you said, you're kind of looking to get back into training. Um, what are you looking forward to in the next couple months? I mean, with especially with you know, it's like, we might have meets, we might not, um, obviously trials and Olympics are, are on the horizon, but in, in, you know, that's, it's a long time till then. So what are you looking forward to just in, in the coming weeks? Yeah. I mean, we're, we, uh, I don't know. I feel like we've been taking things, you know, month by month here. So, um, you know, even the next pro series meet is more than a month away. So, it's almost too too far in the future to be thinking about that, but um, you know, with how every every uncertain everything is. So, um, yeah, I mean, after right after ISL, um, I was looking forward to you know getting my butt kicked, getting into shape, and now that I've had you know a week and a half of it, I maybe spoke too soon, but <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's that's that's what it's going to be for the next month is. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to really getting after it in the water and, and doing the best I can to, to get into shape, um, get back into, you know, long course shape, especially. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm definitely just happy to be, be home for a bit, um, be, you know, in my apartment and, and have my own routine back. Uh, it's, you know, I loved everything about Budapest, but I definitely miss, um, just being, being in the grind here. So, I'm looking forward to, to doing that for the next couple of weeks and, um, you know, Christmas is around the corner. So that's, that's something to look forward to too. So, and Christmas training with that. Um, 
but yeah, no, it's nothing, nothing too serious, nothing on the calendar, but uh, just kind of taking every practice, every, every weight session, every dry land day by day and, and trying to get better. All right. I, I have one more topic that I wanted to discuss with you. That's, that's just uh, breaststroke. Um, okay. <laughs> so my, my first question on that is, do you have a favorite style of training or favorite thing to do, you know, favorite kind of workout that you really enjoy? Um, hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I, I like doing, I like doing pretty tough sets breaststroke. I think I, I really enjoy when I do like a 4am set, but I ask Jack for more breaststroke or I ask instead of doing flying back, I can just do breaststroke. And, um, I think doing sets like that makes me feel accomplished, even though I may not have been going very fast. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, doing things where, um, you know, I think maybe other people, you know, couldn't do or something like that is, is definitely something that I, I like to, I don't know, try to challenge myself with. So, um, I don't know, tough sets like that, but then I also have a soft spots for uh, a soft spot for fast days. So obviously at the end of the week, getting up and, and racing and seeing what you can go, uh, you know, especially with great racing partners like Wilson and Kevin and, you know, Chase sometimes. So yeah, it's, it's definitely having that group there too, especially on the fast days that, that makes that look, you know, worth it. Yeah. And do you have a certain way you approach your breaststroke or things you think about when you are training breaststroke? Um, yes and no. Uh, I try not to think about it too, too much. Cause I feel like if you, if you think about a lot of things, you end up not thinking about anything. So, um, you know, if there's something that a coach tells me or something that I've noticed in a race video, then I really try to focus on just that. Um, and so I can get that pretty routine. Um, so I, I don't try to overanalyze anything. I don't, I don't usually do too much, too, too much video. Um, but I think if a coach tells me something, then I'll, I'll really try to focus on it, but, uh, nothing in particular, at least as of recently. <laughs> was, was there ever a point when you made a big change to your breaststroke or, or maybe just, you know, slight, it's a slight change that made a big difference or have you just always been naturally amazing at breaststroke? Uh, well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> um, I think there was definitely a time in, in college where I was diving down too much. And I think um, one of the coaches here kept emphasizing that I need to be shooting forward and shooting forward as opposed to going down. So I think, you know, that's probably one of the biggest changes I've had to make in my strokes and, you know, the high school days or early college days. But um, yeah, I think just after that, it's just like little things here and there perfecting a pullout or perfecting a breakout or how you approach getting in and out of walls. It's just like little things that, um, you know, you, you tend to focus on for, you know, a, a few weeks and, and then it becomes automatic and then you can focus on something else and then it becomes automatic and so on and so forth. Yeah. I, 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 ca I talked to a couple other breaststrokers recently. Um, Tommy Cope from the DC Trident was mm -hmm. one of them. Marco Koch from the, from the breakers, you know, German breaststroker. Yeah. And they, they both said that training by yourself is a lot more viable when you're a breaststroker because it's a lot more about feel uh -huh. than, than maybe your aerobic base. Whereas, you know, if you're a freestyle or butterfly or like you really have to have that large base is, is feel would, you don't have to agree or disagree uh, with that statement, but you know, is feel a big emphasis for you in breaststroke because it is so. Well, that is, that is something that I'm trying to get better at. I know, at least in the past, I haven't really put too much emphasis on that. Um, but I know I've been training with obviously Kevin for the past um, year or so, and he's, he's big into feel and he's obviously one of the best American breaststrokers. Um, so I, you know, I'm trying to learn from him too. Um, and I think he, he's taught me a couple of things about, about feel and stroke counts. Cause he's big into that. Whereas I'm more like, go, go, go. I have to go this time. I have to do whatever it takes to go pace. And it's like, well, mm. it's not that simple. You have to, you know, go pace, but you have to feel like you're going at 200 pace. You have to, you know, not take a million strokes and go, 
uh, you know, whatever your 200 paces. So um, I'm definitely trying to get better when it comes to, you know, having feel or something like that, but um, definitely hasn't been a priority before, but yeah, trying to get better. Yeah. And so, I mean, th- that might've answered this question as well, but you know, if you're feeling, if your breaststroke is feeling off on a day, which I think mm-hmm. all breaststrokers can relate to, you know, it's again, it's, it's, it's kind of a finicky stroke, you know, uh-huh. what, how do you supplement that? Or do you say, okay, I have to focus on this today because it's not all there. Or do you say, do I have to just take a bunch of strokes and re- try to go really fast to try to supplement uh-huh. that? Yeah, it's, um, I think it depends. Uh, cause sometimes if you're, you know, if you're just feeling generally bad, then you can either really focus on one part of it, like your distance per stroke or something like that. Or, um, you know, I, I can switch strokes sometimes. So I'll switch to freestyle or, you know, that's the easy way out, I would say, but, uh, <laughs> rather than, you know, grind through not feeling good, but, uh, yeah, I think I, I tend to just focus on, on one thing. Cause there's always something you could be doing better if you're, you know, feeling great or feeling, feeling bad. So, um, I don't know. I, I try to forget about bad workouts too. So I don't, I don't uh, linger on them too much, but, um, yeah, I don't know if that, that answered the question. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, th- thank you. Thank you for indulging me and in, in talking breaststroke. Uh, Nick, I appreciate your time. Any parting thoughts before we sign off? Um, I don't think so. Uh, just, uh, happy to be back in the States. Go doors. Uh, I was happy with that season and, uh, you know, we'll see what season three brings. You've been listening to the swim swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take swim swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.